Hey guys, Pete here. Welcome to the first video series on building a Route 4 3D printed CNC machine. In this video series, we'll go through the time lapse build process. Hope you enjoy! Right, jumping straight in, what we're trying to do here is align the baseboard to the frame. So the frame is a mild steel construction welded together. I brought the steel from a local guy that was closing his shop down and wanted to get rid of his stock. So thankfully I kindly took, off, took it off his hand for quite a reasonable price. And what I'm doing here is relying on the wood that was cut by our local hardware store B&Q and aligning the frame up so it's square for later on when the machine is assembled I can work out from reference points if the machine is square or not uh, later on that will be calibrated out by software but it's always good to start off with a nice square machine you can see that I went around this a couple of times because I wanted to ensure this was square and once I got one side done I clamped it down I could go around drilling and tapping holes to take an M4 countersunk bolt to secure the plywood sheets down to the metal frame. I started off drilling through the plywood into the metal and trying to tap uh, it all in one go but this didn't work out too well for me and in the end I resulted to drilling all the way through, lifting up the plywood sheet and tapping the metal on its own. From then the M4 countersunk bolts would go through no worries and I was able to secure the plywood sheet down to the frame. Because my Route 4 that I was building was larger or had a working area larger than a single width of plywood I resulted in splitting this into two parts and having the seam down in the middle. From then I was able to put a centre support in the frame that I could fix the plywood down to. Uh, if your machine is smaller than this then you won't need to do this. You can buy a single sheet of plywood from your local hardware store and build your machine from a single piece. Though if you are building a large machine then this is what you need to do. I'd recommend making a large frame to accommodate it so any twists or changes in the wood over time should be mitigated by the metal frame. It'll be worth mentioning that the working area of the root CNC machine is actually scalable to your own needs. Now for my application I've gone for a square build because I've based it on some 1.5 metre length uh, ball screws. However, if you needed a larger machine or a smaller machine, then Root CNC is scalable in that sense. You can make it longer in X or longer in Y, whichever suits your application needs. Here, I'm going to have a working area of roughly 1.2 meters by 1.2 meters. Now, what you can see me doing is marking up where the Y axis box section mounts need to go on the baseboard. I use some green painters tape or masking tape will do just fine to mark out where the holes should be uh, for me to drill the mounting holes for the parts. Uh, with the masking tape if I make a mistake I can rip it up and start again and I don't get confused by which mark is which and I can draw the hole in the right place. I go around a couple of times making sure it's square before I drill the holes because if I once the holes are drilled I can't go back. Once the holes are drilled in the right place, I then go ahead and mount the first of the box section mounts. Uh, this mount at the top that you see here is for the motor side. There is actually two sides, a motor and a floating side. This is the FF and FK mounts. Uh, for my design, I've got the motor at the top end and I've got the floating side at the bottom. I go ahead and install the box section with the carriages already installed. There will be another video later showing the assembly of the carriages, but they just slide onto the box sections and I use a mallet to drive home the mounts and secure it down with some more M4 bolts. I go ahead and make sure that these two rails are square and perpendicular to one another, and from then I go and secure it down firmly. I then go and get one of the ball screws. These ball screws are one and a half meters long and I go ahead and fix in the two bearings. This design has a fixed side and a floating side bearing and the motor side has the fixed bearing mount. You'll see on the ball screws there is a locking nut with a grub screw that you lock the ball screw into place. I then repeat this process for the other side. These two motors will work in the same direction and drive both sides of the gantry together. Uh, this is done in software, 
but uh, and what allows you to have offset correction. So if the machine is slightly wonky or offset, you're able to add an offset to one rail and actually once the machine is homed, square it back up so you know each time you power up the machine it is square and running true. You can see here that I'm mounting the motors to the Y-axis mounts. It was a bit fiddly to do because I didn't have a long enough Allen key at the time so I resorted to using an impact gun with a hex bit. Probably not the best way of doing this but in the end I got it done. I did have one slight problem of the nut screw, uh, spinning in the plastic part although some uh, hex rod with a M5 tap drilled down the centre of it will fix this issue, no worries. So it's a good note, if you do get any nuts spinning in the holes of the plastic parts try and get some hex standoff nuts and insert them instead uh, they work much better now it's time for the x-axis gantry uh, you can see here I just use a mallet and tap the parts home whilst you've got access to the carriages it's worth making sure they're tied down nice and tightly that's all for the first video stay tuned for the next instalment